up early this morning to make the move into um, Porto Escondido from the anchorage around the corner at um, Hunkalido. Pretty early, no wind, uh, no fetch, flat calm, nice. Time to fill up with some uh, more water, do some laundry, uh, do a little bit of reprovisioning, and to meet up with a, a friend of mine, Derek, uh, on a boat called Interabang, who's leaving in, oh, this week, and um, he's going back to the States, leaving his boat on the mooring ball for the winter, for the hurricane season. So um, we've hired a car, we're going to split the cost, and um, I'm going to drive him to the airport on the uh, 5th, and, uh, and then do a little bit of reprovisioning um, to make sure I've got enough to get back to um, La Paz, where I'm going to keep the boat for uh, hurricane season. I will be staying on the boat, um, other than uh, flying back to Australia for a month uh, to go watch my daughter's graduation, which I'm looking forward to. Not looking forward to the journey. Uh, it's tortuous to get back there, but uh, you've got to do these things. Just noticed my uh, engine temperature is up slightly. Um, it runs like clockwork, uh, just below 180 degrees, probably 175. It's now reading 180, which may mean uh, one of the blades on the impeller is gone, or the uh, seawater strain has uh, got some debris in it. So I need to check that. But you can see I'm doing. 2,400 revs and I'm only doing 5.8 normally that would be up around 7 knots so uh, yeah the bottom is definitely dirty we got some maintenance to do when I get in time to check out why the engine temperature went up slightly when I came in here yesterday first off I'm going to check the uh, raw water filter and um, see how clear that is and then uh, check the impeller uh, if there's nothing wrong with the uh, water intake, seawater intake. Hmm, this takes a while to unscrew. <laughs> Nothing in the bottom of it. Looks like the impeller's been in there since the 4th of the 621, so it's about time for a change anyway. Right, let's get on it. Well, 
Well, first problem, uh, both of the ratchet sets had seized up, so uh, that was the first thing I had to do. And now they're covered in WD-40. It's very slippery. So there's the cover off. The impeller looks okay, but we'll see. Just got to get the bugger out. It's a bit of a slow process getting this out, so I'm not going to film all of it, but it is coming out slowly. You just have to prise it. And here she comes. Well, to me that looks fine. Thankfully there's no bits that have come off, which is good. So I'll clean it up, find a replacement. So normally you keep spare parts of your car in the garage, on a boat, you keep the spare parts under the bed. There we go, that's one uh, cupboard full of spare parts. Uh, I've just got to find the right one. Well, it appears I have two impellers both of which are used, which is a bit disappointing. Um, I'm sure there's got to be a new one there somewhere. I'll go back and have another turn out. As with everything on the boat, you take think it's going to take 15, 20 minutes and ends up taking two hours. So I'm going to hunt down and see if I've got, um, yeah, new ones. Yeah, so I did have a new one. Um, comes with um, some silicon oil, because when you put the thing in, there's no water. And uh, you fire the engine up and it, um, it eats itself to death because there's no lubrication. So you uh, put this in uh, to lubricate it until the water comes through. comes with a gasket and do two different size seals. Only took me half an hour to find. It was in the bathroom cabinet. I don't know why. <laughs> I put it there. Um, God knows why. But uh, that's typical of a, of a boat. Um, you know you've got something, you just don't know where it is. So uh, let's put the, put it in. So I've cleaned up the uh, face of the housing and also cleaned the face of this and I've removed the old rubber gasket. So I'm going to put the new one in and uh, then we can start putting it back together. Right, the uh, new gasket's in. I'm not sure it's the right size. But now, give the inside a nice wipe of silicon. There's a bit of um, galvanic corrosion in here, which is not good. The rest of this I'll put on the um, impeller. This is where it gets yucky. Now we've got to get it in. It needs to go that way. There are tools that you can use to do this. 
but she's in. Give her a liberal squirt of this now. Mm, gaskets come out. That's why I don't think it's the right size or right thickness. That should be enough lubricant. So, all back in. Um, now we're going to test it. Let's hope it doesn't leak and then the uh, impeller doesn't just explode. Alright, time to turn it on, turn the engine over, and the first thing to check is to make sure there's water coming out. Um, the exhaust. Here we go. All right, let's see if there's anything coming over the side. Yeah. Looks a decent flow. Let's go see if it leaks. Unfortunately, it leaks, which is not good. So it leaks, uh, which I anticipated. Uh, I didn't think that um, rubber uh, seal was the right side, as it didn't seem thick enough. The other one I've got is too big. But I'll have a turn out now and see if I can find one the uh, right size. So my next attempt at fixing the leak, uh, using a, um, a wider uh, or broader uh, O-ring, uh, which it, it was too big, so I cut a chunk out of it, and uh, hopefully I was going to try and squeeze it together, um, like so. Once it was in there, um, that more or less worked but it still had a drip um, about one drip every 30 seconds so I thought okay uh, have another go um, I then took out uh, cleaned up the old rubber um, seal uh, with rubbing alcohol um, smothered it in um, thick silicon grease and uh, put it back in and thankfully it worked so there she is uh, with a new sticker on it with a new date and uh, I got a confession to make it wasn't all my own work I did call a friend of mine Derek on the radio to see if he had any gasket material and he popped over and it was his suggestion to use the old um, rubber seal uh, which we cleaned off with alcohol uh, again his idea put it back in so uh, Thanks very much, Derek. Um, as always, cruisers are always out there. And there's always somebody willing to give advice or help. And it was much appreciated. I'm now back on the road again. So to end this story, I'm just going to show you uh, the mess the boat got in to change one simple impeller. So some tools in there. Crap all over here. Crap all over here crap all over here dining table or saloon table full of bits of and pieces and turning out the spares what I thought was going to be 15 minutes two hours but hey it's done the last thing to do was to uh, <clears throat> clean up the ratchets because neither of them were working and uh, <clears throat> I use this one quite often from this little set probably the most uh, frequent tool that I use so I've got them both working again uh, a bit of WD-40 and uh, uh, prizing them backwards and forwards has uh, got rid of any corrosion or rust so um, the tools are back working again thanks for watching the video this week 
I uh, appreciate the time you spend doing this. Um, I won't know whether the uh, slight rise in engine temperature has been um, fixed uh, until I take the boat back to La Paz or on the journey back to La Paz. Uh, I think I've fixed it, but it could be something, it could be the um, heat exchanger tubes um i've collected some dirt and debris and perhaps one of those is blocked which i'll investigate when i get back to pa uh, la paz uh, another cruiser suggested that um, the slight rise in temperature could be due to the fact the uh, water temperatures uh, increased it's about 10 degrees hotter than it was so that could contribute to it as well but i won't know until i, I take it on take the boat on a decent run but anyway Thank you for your time, uh, appreciate it. Uh, if you like the videos, please subscribe, all the normal stuff, and uh, I'll see you next week. Cheers.